Right. I believe our uh, next speaker is is here. Uh, it's uh, her, and her name is Angela McIntyre from Stanford University. She is the executive director of the Wearable Electronics, otherwise known as eWear Initiative. Uh, and uh, her topic is looking ahead, research topics in wearable neurotechnology innovations from obviously Stanford University. Uh, and with that, Angela, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be discussing with you today research topics in wearable neurotechnology innovations. And thank you, Tom, and to Kasha and TechBlick for inviting me to speak and for hosting this conference about wearables. Neurology involves the study of the brain and the network of nerves throughout the body. Much research is happening on neurotech at universities around the world, and I can share with you innovations in labs at Stanford University. There are at least 10 research topics related to wearable neurotechnology that can range from sensing to devices, to neuromodulation and therapies for medical conditions. I hope innovation areas covered in this presentation will be of interest to you. A little bit about my organization at Stanford. Um, I am the executive director of the Wearable Electronics Initiative, and eWear is an industrial affiliates program with the aim of enabling future generations of wearables. eWear is important to our member companies for looking ahead at innovations from Stanford labs and startups that create new product opportunities. Companies engage with Stanford on translational research projects and validating products for new applications. There are more than 50 professors and physicians with research related to wearables at Stanford. And I've been asked to speak today about wearable neurotechnology. eWear includes all topics related to wearables. For example, materials, biosensors, displays, implanted devices, and using AI with data from wearables. The eWear team is shown below, led by Professor Zhenan Bao in the School of Engineering and Professor Xian Chen in the School of Medicine. Mental illness is a major health concern with one in three individuals developing a mental illness in their lifetime. Neuroimaging would be helpful for diagnosis and treatment, but equipment is too expensive for most mental health clinics. Professor Hadi Hosseini has developed a functional near-infrared spectroscopy headband that aims to bring functional neuroimaging to psychiatric clinics and for patients to use at home. This new platform integrates a consumer-grade wearable wireless FNIRS system with a tablet application for patients and includes a HIPAA-compliant cloud solution for, clin for clinicians to remotely manage patient data. FNIRS measures blood flow in the outer cortical region of the brain and can indicate changes in depression, attention, or stress. The FNIRS platform could provide more personalized treatment with biofeedback to persons using the headband at home during therapy. In future, FNIRS data signatures may be correlated with fMRI data and able to assess conditions in which emotion regulation is key, such as for post-traumatic stress disorder. The FNIRS headband holds strong promise for improving psychiatric treatments with neuroimaging done at home. Arthritis affects 25% of adults in the US and the CDC estimates 6 million have pain severe enough to limit activities. More than 40% of patients have a poor response to anti-inflammatory medication and some patients still have pain despite using several medications. An emerging solution from Professor Alex Sackheim and colleagues uses an ultrasound based device to deliver therapy to nerves in the spleen. The central nervous system regulates the body's innate immune system through the vagus and splenic nerves. Ultrasound-based neuromodulation therapy activates the body's natural anti-inflammatory response via a mechanism known as the cholangeric anti-inflammatory pathway. Ultrasound delivers focused acoustic energy to nerves in the spleen at energies less than the diagnostic limit for safety. This proof of concept treatment device can be handheld or wearable and is easy enough to use at home. In an early clinical trial with 24 people, patients wear the device for less than 15 minutes a day and report therapeutic benefits. Their solution also consists of a cloud-based portal that records treatment data for patients and their physicians to review. 